Oh, darling, you look <laughs> fabulous. Oh, it has to do with I make my own clothes and I'm a serger person. I like to use my serger and my scanning cut. That's why I'm fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the camera's not on. Hold on. Whoops. Hold on. We lost all our cameras. Hold on, everybody. Oh, there we are. Okay, almost. Oh, wrong one. Okay. <laughs> that was us being crazy, but now we lost. That camera's not working. Oh, everything's falling apart today. Hi. Hi, Joanne. Oh, my God. Good morning. That was crazy. Is it working now? Uh -huh. Nope. Nope. Well, nothing's uh, going right today. It's Monday. So there we go. Hi, Miss Franny. Welcome to Make It Monday. All right. We'll try one more time. Nope. So we're down a camera. Okay. All right. So I'll run and get my iPad and plug it in. You sit and visit with everybody. For okay. A oh, goody. Now that they, <laughs> now that they watch the... The puppet show. The puppet show. The puppet show. Okay, we got oh from West Alexandria, Georgia. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hey Nancy. Hi Nancy. Hey Bert. Hi Reen. Hi Jeanette. Yes, looking forward to Cleveland too. It's going to be a really great show, I think, is uh, Atlanta and Lakeland were really good. A lot of turnouts, a lot of great new classes, so I think we'll have a lot of fun. And if you're in our area, uh, be sure to um, – thank you, Lori um, – to sign up early for our bus trip because we have a few seats left for that. Hey, Vicki and Deidre and Mindy. And we're almost there. So – we're going to do something a little because we, we had a couple of people talking and asking questions about seam allowances and how to maintain them because some people have guides on the machines, some don't. Sometimes when they use the guides, it seems like they're not consistent with their width of the seam allowance because sometimes it seems like it's a little bigger, sometimes a little smaller. And hopefully, we're going to take the guesswork out of that. Right, Amy? Right. Okay, we're going to try. <laughs> Trade seats, <Jeff>. okay. <laughs> Musical chairs today. What is happening? Oh my heavens! Hello, everybody. Wow, there we go. Let's see if you can see my fat belly. I'm gonna oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay, we're good now. Good morning, Reen. Reen says it's hard to get a perfect quarter inch. It is, and it has to do yeah. with machinery, and that's one mm -hmm. of the things that we're going to talk about, right? Right, is um. You know, making things, what do you want to say, perfect. Um, or as accurate as we can. As accurate as we can, exactly. I'm going to squeeze in a little bit. So Jen's going to start with a serger because every sergers typically don't mark a seam allowance. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because your width is different all the time. Your mm -hmm. fabric's different all the time. And depending on how far you move your blade, which we call the bite, right? The distance that blade moves left and right. And if you have a three, uh, two needles in or one needle in. Right. So Terry, Terry asked the question, um, do we think the feed system on some machines keep a more constant seam allowance? The answer is yes. Yeah. Because if you have like some older machines, right? And this is why people like the featherweights, those old Singer rockets, because the the feed teeth were kind of like were humpy like this. The new machines have a box feed which come up straight across and straight down, which mm -hmm. I think is more superior in the in the end. People mm -hmm. like the stitch quality of the older machines, but the box feed where it comes up across and down is much better than a feed system that rides like this. So you're going to see that box feed system. It's pretty much standard practice now, but more so when we were transitioning from older mechanical machines to computerized machines, um, the how many points of contact on your feed teeth. Like if, like if this was my feed dogs, right? Some have two in the front, 
and then just two. Some have two and then four and then one in the back. Some sewing machines have nine points of contact with the feed teeth. So if you take your presser foot off and look down at your feed teeth, you may only have two and you're not going to get as good of yeah. um, consistency if you have a feed dog in the front, two in the sides, and one in the back. And again, with that box feed system. Mm -hmm. So that does make a huge difference um, when you're sewing. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say that it is, um, who, it, it's not a matter of how much money you spend, but you, you, in a, well, I don't want to say, I don't want to price shame anybody because I grew up with any sewing machine my father found in the dumpster and we learned how to fix it. So I, <laughs> you know, I get that. But as you start to spend more money, you get, better results mm -hmm. unfortunately so that's how it's like when you work, make a project with better fabric it turn, you get better results yes and just you know now and i'm gonna say i think Janome is the only one on the market that has this new throat plate a new presser foot for a perfect scant quarter inch of the high performance plate and foot because then it only rides like you have let's say you have four rows of feed teeth it rides perfectly on two teeth. So you don't get that kick out in the front and the kick in the back. Hmm. And then like with, with Bernina and Foff, and I don't know about, does Viking have the, the pull down, the extra little yeah. finger in the back? The, the, IDT, yeah. the IDT is mm -hmm. what Foff and Viking call it. Bernina mm -hmm. calls it something else. Um, but yes, your feed teeth are important. The more, and, and if you go look at machines, right? If you are a piecer or your sewer, basically you're a straight sewer. Mm -hmm. Um, look at the points of contact on your feet teeth and that's super important. Yeah. And also adjustable presser foot pressure mm -hmm. makes a difference whether that fabric does this while you're sewing. Yeah. And also keeping the feet teeth clean because a lot of times we take our bobbin case out and we clean it, but we don't think of taking the throw plate off the machine and cleaning the top you of know the what? feet teeth. I think that's a good make it Monday because if I pull machines from repair, um, when the feed teeth, like are those rows, we take and we pull out little felted pads of lint between them because the feed teeth get smooth and your feed teeth do wear down, right? Thank goodness nobody's using rubber feed teeth anymore. That was Singer's deal, right? Those black feed teeth. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so the, take a brush and kind of like lightly scrub your feed teeth to get everything out of those little those little wedges that yeah. are in there. So that helps too. Because if you keep building up, your feet teeth won't project all the way through the thread plate. Right. And then that's repair. And right. And then um, Terry says, what about build, build it walking feet? So build and walking feet um, are a little more consistent. If you have a, so if you have a walking foot, like this is your needle screw and you have that claw, right? And that claw mm -hmm. goes on your needle screw and then it goes up and down at the same time. That is one pace off your feed teeth on the bottom. If you have a feed system that plugs into the back, like brother baby lock has the move it foot that plugs into the back. Janome has her AccuFeed system, which hooks into the back. Um, that becomes the same pace as your feed teeth. So they're integrated between the feed teeth and not the needle bar. Exactly. So the needle bar is what controls the majority of walking feet. Uh, our dual feed feet for most sewing machines and it isn't the most accurate, but it's all we have. Mm -hmm. It's better than nothing. So just be wary of that. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we just kind of took us off a path there, which is fine. Uh, like Lori said, it's manic Monday. Oh, Joseph says you always remind him of Bob Ross. So we get Bob Ross, Chuck Norris, Barry Gibb, Barry Gibb and Jesus. Someone brought in Thank you. a little egg that had your picture on it. Like you crack it open like the tomb. And she said, this looks like Jim. I'm bust out laughing. And it did. It would look like Jim. I'm popular this time of the year. I don't know if it was a good representation of Jim or a poor representation of Jesus. I'm not sure. <laughs> good one. Good. That was a good thing. I'm not sure yeah. who got the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a whole different dimension. Yeah. Well, it's moving holy, on. It's Holy Week, so I would take Jesus if we Oh my gosh. How bad. All right, let's just do the Zeme Allowance thing. That's what we came for. Okay. <laughs> oh my. Oy. What a start. It's Monday. What the heck? I couldn't get my printer to work and I was saying bad words. I picked the wrong printer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
So, okay. So I got a piece of, <laughs> so I have a piece, uh, two pieces of fleece that I was going to serge up. And normally when we cut them out, they got a five eighths inch seam allowance, right? Right. So then if I want to position this, I need to go from my needles over. So if I was using a guide or even without a guide, I need to know where to position it because they do have markings on some of them on the throw plate, but it really kind of refers to also where your needle is. So if this is the furthest needle out, I want to measure from this one over five eighths. So I have a little tool that I could do that with. So I can put the five eighths right along the left side of the uh, needle and go over. So I know that my fabric has to project out at least this far. And kind of going down, I'm going to move my guide over. So I have it right about at five eighths because I'm going straight down this line right to here. So basically, it'd be like from where this needle would be to almost like the edge of the serger would be like my five eighths and seam allowance. So I would line everything up right there. So I'm going to go to sew, I would have it like that. So you can see it's cutting off about a quarter of an inch. And I got about a three eighths inch seam allowance there. Right. So you want to measure what's on your fabric. Right. Right. And you want to measure what's cut off your fabric and yeah. add those up. Right. So that right there should be five eighths. Right. And so that is where sergers get tricky because you're using left needle or right needle. Mm hmm the bite or the stitch width of your serger changes every time you move that blade, because with fleece, sometimes you widen that stitch a little bit to mm -hmm. absorb the bulk. So you move your blade to the right. Now your seam allowance is off. Right. So I always do a, I so, do a test run. Kind of line it up with that. Yeah. So you can use a, one of those little, those little square measuring tools. Um, and then I would see see where my I need to be. If you don't have a guide, even put a piece of blue painter's tape there or something so you yes. know. But I do that every time I start a new project because when you're sewing a garment, mm -hmm. right? So it could make a difference. Yeah. Especially in a woven. Yeah, because if you're off, it'll make it either smaller or bigger. Yeah, which is neat. And good. if you consistently made all your seam allowance bigger, you're going to make it a size larger. Or a size smaller. Right. And then when we, those of you who were in the serger box, when we did the serger quilt, right, we had to make sure we had a quarter inch. And the yeah. only way to test that was serge it and do it. So when we do, like Sharon just started her Accurate by Choice, which is our beginning quilt class here, um, which is more like a boot camp, <laughs> intense, yeah. intense, right? But it's, it's you learning to be accurate about everything. Um, where we see people come in and goes, oh, there's something wrong with my machine because my seam allowance is off. And I said, well, are you using two machines? And the answer is yes. They have a little travel machine, right? And when you, you need to know on your throw plate, there's that oval opening. Is that a five millimeter, six millimeter, seven millimeter, nine millimeter, right? That makes a difference. If you are doing a quarter inch seam, with your travel machine, which is probably a six millimeter stitch, right? Because they're small. And then you go home to your monster machine that's nine millimeters. You need to double check that the, the, the quarter inch seam is the same. And I know that sounds crazy. You can use a foot with a rudder. You can use a foot without a rudder. But we see it all the time where that seam allowance is a crumb off. And when it's a crumb off, that crumb adds up mm -hmm. to a half inch over the piece part of your quilt. So let's take a peek at what you what Jim stitched out. Um, someone said it might be easier to measure with the width left over than the width of the pieces stitched and cut off. You're going to add them both together, Doris, right? Mm -hmm. So you so your seam and this is this is this is the reason why we're talking about this. Your serger, your seam allowance isn't what's cut off. Your seam allowance is the combination of how wide of a stitch you have on mm -hmm. and how much you're trimming away. Yep. So that is, um, that's where it's deceptive with a serger. Right. And your serger doesn't tell you that. Your manual doesn't tell you that. Mm -hmm. You have to suffer and listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what else we got going on? Well, I was kind of playing out with the regular machine and whenever I went with like a quarter inch, 
And when I, well, actually, when I first put it on and I used an edge guide thinking it was quarter, it's actually more like, whoa, there yeah. you go. Yeah. It was more like three eighths. So I had to go and play with it and adjust it to get that true quarter inch, like the one behind so here. So you used a rudder, you did not use a rudder. I used a rudder. Okay. And I just went and touched my, like, well, the machine came on with the straight stitch. I put my foot on with the rudder to edge guide it. And it actually is a little more like a three eighths of an inch. So like Amy said, it was a crumb off. So it was a little more than what I wanted because I wanted a true quarter inch, which meant I had to move my needle over. Here's a foot with the rudder. Which just shocked Oops. me. So basically what I popped that on, it wasn't quite a true quarter inch for me. There we go. So I have to go and move my needle position over. But we can say that with caution, you need your quarter inch foot needs to have room to move your needle. Yeah. Right. Some of them are just single hole, which I think is dangerous because. Um, oh, this is a good hint. Thank you, Doris. Yellow legal tablet lines are a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Did not know that. That's a great thing. And then we have another hint. Moving your left hand when advancing the fabric, the pressure that the hand gives affects the seam line. You really need to support your work at all times. I I mm -hmm. agree. No pushing or pulling, but support is definitely yeah. the way to go. And try to have it like in a flatter surface than right. riding over something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're going from machine, scoot over, Jip, going from, you know, machine, 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 mm -hmm. you need to double check that quarter inch at all times. And so I will take a piece of not cardstock, but like heavy paper. Sew my quarter inch seam in each tray. Like, a, like if we're in the RV, I pull it out and I measure. Is this the same seam I had when I was at the stores? Mm. Is the same seam I have at home? Because when I sew, I never know what I'm sewing on, right? I get traded in, returned, broke. <laughs> I have an assortment of things I sew on just because nobody else will. And so. That's what I saw. And so I always have that in each one and I compare that seam allowance and I make a note because your sewing machine may have a quilting menu with an instant quarter inch, right? That's great. Is it truly a quarter inch? I measure it anyway, mm -hmm. but then I go to a little machine that doesn't have it and I'm adjusting the stitch width and I just want to make sure everything um, yeah, that is, makes sense. is the same. The other thing that affects your seam allowance, now not so much in garment construction or serging is um, your thread weight. Yes. If you are piecing a quilt and you are using, I'm not throwing anybody on the bus. I'm just going to use an example. Like if you're using like coats, the thread, which is a 55 weight or even a 50 weight thread. And depending on the slubs, it could be a 45 weight thread, right? Mm -hmm. That absorbs your seam allowance. We have piecing thread out here. It's a hundred weight. There is no bulk in your seam. No, mm -hmm. because you think when you press your seam, you're pressing over that thread, which absorbs fabric. Yeah. So you have to be, you know, thoughtful with everything. And that's why pressing is so important when you're piecing, because mm -hmm. if you don't press right, your seam allowance is wrong. Yeah. And so that's. Well, that was like whenever traveling day. and doing my shirts and a lot of people will go feel like the collar bands, are like it's so thin. It's like what you get in a store and it, which is the goal is to make it really thin. Right. And since I went and did that same experiment where I used my regular sewing machine thread to sew the seam and felt the thickness of it, then I used the piecing thread and maybe a little shorter stitch length and felt the difference. It was like half as thick. So I switched to the piecing thread and right. a little shorter stitch length. Even though I'm working with, let's say, a red shirt, I'll use that white thread. You can't see the stitches. Or you can't see it. And I love that yeah. 100 weight thread. So the higher the number, the skinnier the threads, whether it's wire count or anything like that, yeah. it's all the same. But a um, hundred weight thread, if you're doing like um, an example of like turned under applique and you're using a tiny, tiny like blind hem stitch, it's invisible. Yeah. It's really, mm -hmm. really nice. So that's something to consider the weight of your thread. How many points of contact do you have in your bead teeth, right? Mm -hmm. Is the manufacturer right? Is the rudder on your foot out of place? So there's a lot of factors that can cause an uneven um, seam allowance. Um, Alice asked, is it cotton thread? Yes, right? The 100 weight is cotton. No, it's, I poly it's, polyester. it's polyester. I piece everything with polyester. I'm not a purist when it comes to, um, and I say that like I piece a lot. I don't because I hate puzzles. So 
But if I'm garment sewing, I'd rather have polyester on everything. It's going to wear nice. It's going to, mm -hmm. um, so, and, and some, and uh, Doris just asked, what size needle do you use? Um, if I'm doing cottons, it's a 75. I, mm -hmm. I use nothing bigger than an 80. Yeah, I always use 80s. 80. And, and, and here's the reason why people put, I call them nails. Like, like long armors uses a size 16, 18. That's because of the speed and the penetration. On your sewing machine, most people put a size 90 in or a even higher, a hundred needle in because the sewing machine isn't strong enough to penetrate what they're sewing. It has nothing to do with the needle, right? So if your sewing machine is strong, you shouldn't worry about that needle size as right. much. So I do cottons with a 75. I am your, can't say all of them, the brother and Janome um, are calibrated to use a 75 for embroidery. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why we use embroidery needles because the eye is a little bit bigger opening, but you want that thin point of penetration. You don't want to put a nail in. Right. We get machines in repair and I'm like, what were you sewing? She goes, Oh, I was embroidering. I said, what? <laughs> and it had like a size 90 needle in it. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I was doing denim. I don't care. Don't need a denim needle. Yeah. You don't hey, need fine. you have a good sewing machine, a strong sewing machine. You do not need to put huge needles mm -hmm. in the machines. Um, where did we get that seam guide? Well, the seam guide was in one of our serger boxes, yes. right? It was one of our serger subscription boxes. I don't think they're uncommon. You may find them in a local quilt shop more than you will in... Um, like a chain store. In a chain store, right? So, um, but that's, it's just, a, it's a, I'm guessing it's aluminum. Mm -hmm with all different sizes, quarter, eight, five eighths, yeah. right? All the markings are on there. So you never know what's going to come in your serger box or your mm -hmm. scan and cut box, or that's what Jim and I are doing today. Where's the ladies? We're horsing around because <laughs> we're behind schedule for the scan and cut box, which ships the first of April. Yes. Yeah. Right. April. So we're pressing today to get everything done and, and the whole box. Oh, Terry, thank you. The whole box is the premise is direct cut, mm -hmm. right? So you can do what we call printables. You print something out and then you could cut it out. So we're going to make shadow boxes with mm -hmm. our sewing ladies. And so you're going to say to me, Amy, that's stupid. I don't cut paper. I don't want to cut paper. Direct cut is the same if you're cutting out direct, cutting out fabric, yep. stickers, all about the process mm -hmm. and not the, the project. Yep. Right? So we but they might like the project. You might like the project because Jim has made this amazing frame. Three dimensional shadow box, three dimensional frame. You can do on a chipboard and you can paint it. So you yeah. can use make a, and you can resize it. You can make a picture frame in your scan and cut. Yeah. And decorate how you so anyhow, we are. We are hanging in there. So we are doing good. The new serger box, um, it's going to be a technique box. This is April, May. 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 Um, you're going to make a cover for your serger. You're going to get a little doodad to help you measure odd angles. Um, anyhow, but it's about techniques. And again, it's about the process, not the project. If you have a serger cover, fine. Then make yourself the top of an apron or don't do anything with it. Just mm -hmm. do the techniques and learn it. So. That's kind of where or appliance we're at. covers or appliance covers or something. That's it. So I need a new appliance cover. I treated myself to the new seven and a half quart KitchenAid. I had the Ooh. small one before and I put the cover on. It looks like I was putting its little brother's coat <laughs> on. <laughs> it's like, ah, it's just half of it hanging out. So, all right. So that is your seam allowance. I apologize for the uh, start of the video. It's Monday. Yeah. It's Monday. If you're local, we still have about 15 seats left for the bus trip to see Jim in Cleveland. Um, and what else we got going on? Uh, well, we just had uh, Amanda here. Saturday. Amanda was here. And if you go back and watch the Facebook, you can still order uh, fabric if you want. You can go back and watch the Facebook video we did. We're selling so we got like limited quantities left, right? Yeah, we got limited quantities left. We're still going to keep what's left in the store. So, um, Door stop by shop. cover. Yes, you can make a sewing machine cover. Sure. Yeah. I don't care what you do with your serger stuff. I mean, I care, but I <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Whatever you want to do with it, it's fine. We just want to teach you cool stuff. Yeah. Right. And I think Jim's been a great partner with the boxes and 
sometimes we fall off the wagon and take a left turn that's really kind of far. And um, it may not be your box, but the next box, you're going to love it. So yeah. we'll we'll be back, I think. So that's May, June, July. Mm -hmm. July will probably be another garment. I'm working yeah. with Amanda to see what the problem is getting enough yardage, mm -hmm. right? Out of one thing, one color. So one. everybody gets the same. Everybody gets the same, right? Which sometimes is a struggle for us. Sometimes everybody gets different colors, which doesn't make me happy. But anyway. All right, everybody. Have a terrific Monday. Have a wonderful week. We know um, for uh, some of you out there, it's Holy Week for some of us. And um, so it's busy with family and friends. And um, we don't want to. We, we'll be here next Monday, right? Holiday's yeah. over. Back to the grind. So. Mm -hmm. Chocolate overdose. Chocolate, you know? chocolate overdose. Because I just had my birthday and er, Easter is early. Um, yeah. So I, I'm overloaded with chocolate this year. Yes. You can make more than garments. Oh, thank you, Terry. I appreciate okay. that because we, fr it's so frustrating when people think, oh, I just overcast with it. I never changed my thread. I have a black, it's mm -hmm. black or white. And I'm like, what? You don't. So anyhow, that, that's what we want to do is just kind of give you a little bit of push and go woo -hoo. Mm -hmm. you can do it yep right you can do that i'm having i'm making a shirt that says i can totally make that like that's my phrase like i'm walking through hobby lobby or i'm walking through kirkland's or i'm walking through home depot i'm like i can make that you know but in my head at least i can make it. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody have a terrific week enjoy your holiday mm -hmm. and um, we will see you next monday yes. All right. Hang in, everybody, because the more you know, the more you sell.